Hello and welcome. My name is Jeff Taylor, and we're here at the 2019 Croy in Seattle, Washington. And I'm here today with uh, two researchers, Dr. Peter Hunt from UCSF and Dr. Sarah Gianella from UCSD, UC San Diego. <laughs> so welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. So I guess we're here today to talk about inflammation. So we hear a lot about inflammation in HIV, but what do we really mean about that, and why is it so important? Yeah, so um, inflammation is really the process that your uh, that your bo your body does in response to an infection uh, or some sort of damage. You hit your thumb with a hammer and it becomes swollen, inflamed, red, painful. Um, that process is inflammation. Uh, but a lot of diseases like HIV, even um, uh, uh, when uh, your viral load is uh, undetectable mm -hmm. uh, on therapy. Uh, there's low levels uh, uh, of inflammation in the body, a little bit of overactivity of the immune system that takes its toll on all the organs in the body. So mm -hmm. it can contribute to heart disease, a risk of cancer, risk of uh, bone disease, osteoporosis. Yeah. Um, so uh, all the things we worry about in HIV yeah. these days. Yeah, so a lot of the things that uh, we know now are, are, are increased uh, uh, in people living with HIV, particularly as they get older, um, we think are, have been linked to the inflammatory process. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so a lot of us have been working uh, on trying to figure out why uh, uh, inflammation persists uh, mm -hmm. uh, despite treatment of HIV. Um, and we've come to realize that there are a few you know, root drivers of this inflammation. Um, one is HIV itself. It stays there uh, in the body. If you stop therapy, the virus will come uh, right back. Um, and so we know that we um, you know, don't fully get rid of HIV uh, with the treatment. We just suppress it. Um, and so, but that little bit of HIV coming out of cells may uh, cause problems. Um, we know that the uh, uh, the um, uh, the uh, gut barrier. So you have um, in the lining of your gut that keeps all the poop and the bacteria in your stool from getting inside the body causing mm -hmm. problems. Um, you have a brick wall there and that uh, brick wall gets leaky uh, in, in, um, in, in, uh, during HIV infection. Uh, and uh, while it gets repaired a little bit um, uh, with treatment of HIV, it doesn't fully repair itself. And so little bits and pieces of bacteria can still get uh, into the body um, and, and cause inflammation too. Uh, but there's also a, a third big contributor. It's, a, it's another virus that most people living with HIV, over 90% have, uh, called CMV, mm -hmm. uh, that we think may be playing a, a really important role in contributing to a lot of the inflammation that we see. So, Dr. Gianella, can you tell us more about CMV and, and why it's so important in the setting of HIV? Yes, I'm very happy to because, uh, <laughs> as everybody knows, uh, CMV is one of my great passion. So, as Peter said, CMV is, uh, is a virus. Uh, so, um, CMV has some similarity with HIV because once somebody gets infected with CMV, you will really never get rid of it. Uh, so, you have a chronic viral infection. So, most people get infected with CMV at a very young age, like either when they are children or at the latest in the teenager years. Um, and as Peter said, over 90% of, of people, especially people living with HIV, are also co-infected with CMV. Mm -hmm. And uh, CMV usually causes problem uh, like florid disease uh, in people that are very sick uh, and with very low CD4 T cells. Yeah, I remember but, in the early days of HIV, yeah. many people were going blind and yeah. having other complications. Exactly, and we don't see that so much anymore. Right. Uh, but uh, what we have realized, uh, you know, like my group and Peter's group and many others that have been studying CMV related to inflammation is that even when the immune system is uh, actually uh, intact, uh, uh, CMV can still replicate at very low level in various mucosal sites like the mouse or the genital tract uh, and um, salivary glands. Uh, mm. And uh, we think that it can uh, contribute significantly to this ongoing inflammation. We know people living with HIV have more CMV replication even if they never uh, notice it. We know that if we sample semen and uh, saliva from people living with HIV, 80% of them uh, have some CMV somewhere. And uh, there are a lot of publications uh, that associate CMV with inflammation. Hmm. But what we don't know right now is the direction, right? Is CMV 
like a root cause of inflammation or just people that have more inflammation tend to have more CMV? So what are we doing about this? If we think CMV might be a problem, what are we doing to, to find out if it is and, and perhaps address it? So, uh, so we did a study several years ago um, uh, 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 treating people living with HIV who uh, didn't recover normal T cell counts mm -hmm. despite treatment um, for their HIV infection to see whether treating uh, um, a CMV that wasn't causing them any symptoms at all, right. uh, that low level CMV replication that Sarah is talking about, <laughs> Uh, using a drug called valgancyclovir mm -hmm. to see whether it might reduce immune activation. And, and, and way back then, this is almost uh, a decade ago now, um, uh, we, we showed that it did decrease some markers of immune activation. And um, we're now, uh, uh, but unfortunately that drug um, uh, has a lot of uh, side effects. Uh, so it can lower your blood count uh, mm -hmm. and make you feel really tired. And it, e even some of the immune cells in the, in the blood might, right. might be affected eventually. Uh, and, and that's the last thing we would want to do. Um, and so it, it didn't make sense to move forward with uh, that medicine uh, as, a, as a treatment strategy to reduce inflammation in people who are otherwise healthy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, now we have new tools available uh, to the new, new therapies that have been developed that, to treat CMV that seem to have far fewer side effects. And so we've, we've gone back to that early study uh, and, and found uh, really remarkable things that, you know, testing more uh, uh, inflammatory pathways uh, that... Uh, using the samples from the old study. Using the samples from that old study. And, wow. and um, we're here at the, the CROI 2019 right now. We're presenting some of those data here uh, at the meeting. Um, but... Um, uh, essentially, uh, that study uh, was the strongest, uh, most consistent uh, 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 treatment to reduce immune activation that anyone has studied in the last 10 years. Uh, oh, wow. uh, to, uh, have treated HIV. A lot of these, um, uh, a lot of these biomarkers of inflammation that strongly predict uh, things like heart disease, mm -hmm. like type 2 diabetes, like mortality. Uh, are going down by an entire quartile. A quartile is like 25% right. of all people, you know, um, uh, go down. All, all, you know, um, uh, you know, a, ma a major so a major reduction, uh, and um, and the effect sizes we think uh, that we saw might translate uh, to like a 22% you know, decrease risk of heart disease mm -hmm. or a stroke. Um, it might decrease, uh, uh, might um, uh, correlate with a, uh, about a 50% reduction in uh, type 2 diabetes. Oh, really? Risk. Uh, so wow. really profound, really profound uh, effect sizes. And so we're we're quite um, we're quite excited about this as a possible real therapeutic strategy. Now that we have um, uh, uh, new treatments available mm -hmm. um, uh, that may be safer to, uh, to treat. <coughs> So are you um, designing another trial then to explore this, uh, this hypothesis? Um, so yes. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact. <laughs> Peter and I are uh, co-chairing uh, an upcoming trial through the AIDS clinical trial group. Uh -huh. uh, so it's ACTG 5383, if mm -hmm. you're interested in the number, where we are treating people um, living with HIV with latermovir for uh, 48 weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a randomized, uh, double-blinded, uh, double-blinded, uh, <laughs> uh, placebo-controlled trial of mm. the thermovir. Uh, well, what kind of patients <coughs> are you looking for for the trial? Sorry, you okay? <laughs> so, so we're um, uh, we're 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 trying to enroll people living with HIV um, uh, uh, that are suppressed uh, on their on their current regimen, uh, but. Um, uh, we're particularly interested in finding people who have low uh, CD4 counts, mm. despite um, uh, several years of, uh, of, of treatment, because we think um, uh, uh, some people say <laughs> immunologic non-responders. You know, CD4 <laughs> count just doesn't come back to normal, uh, despite suppressing the virus. And, and um, uh, we think CMV is likely playing an even greater role in, in, in people like that. We also want you know people who have recovered normal C, uh, CD4 counts too, mm -hmm. but it's particularly important that we get people who have um, low CD4 counts as well. Yeah, that's uh, really gratifying to hear because I mean that's been for long-term survivors especially. There are a number of people who, no matter what they do, they've done everything right. They're taking their meds, cannot get their uh, T cell count back up, and uh, 
you know, they have to stay under their meds to keep from getting sick. It's, it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. Another important category that we really want to enroll is women. Mm -hmm. And I know historically we have not done very well enrolling women in many st studies, but this particular study, uh, I think it's important and we are actually aiming to, for at least 25% of our study mm -hmm. participants to be women because we know that women have a different immune system and that uh, women uh, react differently to viral infections uh, and so it will be very important in particular for women to know if CMV is a major contributor for inflammation and I think so we, we need women yeah. for this study. Yeah particular. that's always been a problem in HIV research especially <coughs> people, people think of it still as a gay men's disease and it certainly isn't worldwide half or maybe a little more than half of all people living with HIV are women. Uh, do you have special strategies on how you're going to get more women into this trial? Well, one of the strategies is to set a minimum 25%. Uh, mm -hmm. This means that if we enroll too many men, eventually we will stop enrolling women, men and offer the trial only to women. Ah, good. And we will talk with the community for sure uh, and yeah. with the ACTG community partners uh, to try to really enhance our outreach uh, to the women population. That's terrific. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> It's winter in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we winter. edit out my coffee? <laughs> <laughs> it's real life. Yeah. So um, is there anything else you want to tell us about the trial? Or, uh, well, um, there, there's a bunch of sub-studies uh, yeah. in, in the trial that we think are really important. So um, the, the goal is not just to reduce uh, some you know, lab test, uh, mm -hmm. some biomarker in a blood sample. Uh, uh, while we think that's important to show that we're having an effect of the intervention, we want to show uh, that we're actually decreasing the risk of heart disease, decreasing the risk of diabetes. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and, um, uh, and in order to do that, we need to build in these sub-studies that uh, look for effects uh, on the, the blood vessels. Mm -hmm. uh, like, is there, can we reduce inflammation in the lining of the aorta? Um, and we can do that with um, fancy imaging techniques now uh, uh, called FDG PET. Uh, it's just a fancy scan um, to see, to measure the amount of inflammation. So we want to see if the uh, the treatment reduces that. We we have a feeling that it's uh, the treating CMV is going to have a major effect uh, in the blood vessels and, and heart disease risk because um, when the immune system is really weak, uh, say if you get a solid organ transplant and mm -hmm. go on potent immunosuppressive right. drugs, uh, we really see you know increased uh, risk of heart disease uh, when that happens. Uh, and we know that uh, treating CMV and preventing CMV from um, from replicating actually decreases heart disease risk in that setting. Oh, wow. uh, so we think that um, a similar thing may be happening in HIV, uh, although on a, a, you know, a, a, a smaller scale. Right. Um, and so that, that imaging uh, will, will help give us a clue as to whether we're, we're making some progress there. Uh, another thing um, that we're uh, encouraging participants to consider is uh, a fat biopsy uh, study. Um, uh, so uh, ju uh, just a little bit of fat uh, uh, in the belly. Uh, Most people I, I can, I can, I can yeah. that. Yeah. I, I'd be happy <laughs> to donate that, some of mine. Uh, uh, it's been growing over the past couple months. Uh, but um, uh, it, it turns out that uh, CMV actually uh, also replicates in the fat tissue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and one of the things that um, uh, several of our colleagues have um, seen in, in looking at fat tissue in people with HIV is they see a lot of immune cells uh, that go into the fat responding to inflammation there. Uh, and um, as a consequence of the inflammation in the fat, uh, you get scarring of the fat tissue. And when you get scarring of the fat tissue, that fat, uh, the normal fat cells that normally expand when you eat too much, as, mm -hmm. as my fat has done, uh, um, it can't go into the fat cell anymore and it has to go to other organs in the body. And so fat gets deposited in the liver. Uh, so you've heard about NASH or non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or fatty, fatty liver disease. Um, uh, that's a major problem in people living with HIV. Uh, and it may contribute to diabetes risk uh, and further contribute to heart disease risk. And so uh, we think um, uh, looking at what's happening in the fat tissue uh, may give us clues as to whether we're on the right track and preventing some of those complications as well in, in people with HIV.
Well, I know early on when we first got effective treatment, we started seeing lipodystrophy, right? Fat redistribution in very strange ways, either they're losing all the fat in their extremities or in their faces or, or gaining it, you know, in their belly or even on their, you know, getting buffalo humps and things like that. So it's fascinating to see that story kind of yeah. coming around. And, uh, it's a new dimension of that now. <laughs> yeah. We also have a neural, uh, neural soup study where uh, so cytomegalovirus has been associated uh, to neurocognitive impairment, mm. but also to depression and inflammation in the cerebrospinal fluid, which is the fluid who is around our brain. Right. And so our third soup study will be to collect a little bit of this uh, fluid and uh, uh, measure level of inflammation and also to uh, run some neurocognitive batteries and emotional batteries to see if treating CMV also has a positive effect on, on depression and uh, you know, neurocognitive impairment. So that would be a spinal tap yeah. then that they would yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. So I, I think there is so much uh, to be gained, knowledge to be gained with this study. Peter and I have been planning this study for years and uh, super excited that finally we are getting there. And we encourage people to participate and also to consider all three soup studies mm -hmm. because we, we really believe that CMV is one of the root cause uh, of uh, uh, inflammation and some of the disease that we see in people living with HIV. No, this sounds fascinating. It yeah. could answer a lot of questions we've been wanting to know yeah. about for a long, long time. Yeah. How can people find out more about the study? Uh, well, uh, you can contact uh, your local ACTG uh, <laughs> uh, site um, uh, 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 to see if they're participating in the study and to enroll. Um, you can go to the ACTG website uh, as well um, uh, uh, to get more information about the study. Um, you can also email Sarah and I, yeah. and we're happy to uh, <laughs> respond. And so we are not starting enrollment yet, uh, right. but we hope that uh, m maybe la late summer. Mm -hmm. So sometime later ready. this year, yeah. Yeah. in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. So, I also have another study that I would oh, like to Oh, one more. <laughs> <laughs> so, in parallel with the Letermovir study, we, also, we are also developing a CMV vaccine trial. Mm. So, I think that, uh, as I am excited about both, I think the Letermovir trial is a more direct way to suppress uh, cytomegalovirus. Mm -hmm. But, uh, as you can imagine, if it works, uh, it's not really scalable to the entire population because yeah. we, we don't, I don't think that we can ask every po possible person living with HIV to take Letermovir for the rest of their time, life. And so one of our collaborators at the City of Hope, uh, um, they developed a vaccine. It's called Triplex. It has uh, had very positive uh, uh, results uh, in a phase one trial with healthy volunteer. And they also had very recently, they presented some data on stem cell transplant patient. Mm -hmm. They administered the vaccine on over 100 uh, people who are very sick, right, after a stem cell transplant. And they, so it's very safe, it's very effective, and it uh, significantly reduced uh, uh, CMV viremia in these patients. Uh, so this is the therapeutic vaccine. It doesn't prevent people from getting yeah. CMV. As it a, treats their CMV. Well, th that's a good question. Like in the setting of uh, uh, stem cell transplant, it's different. But we mm. will be using here as a thera um, therapeutic to try to control because all people will already be infected. Right. Uh, and we are just trying to boost the immune system in a way that it will uh, do a better job in controlling this uh, low level replication that bothers us so much. So basically we, we have kind of two trials in parallel, <coughs> Letermovir and uh, the 5355, which is the um, CMV vaccine mm -hmm. uh, trial. So I think I am excited about both of them. I think both are providing us with complementary information. And uh, um, so I really encourage uh, people to consider either one of them. You cannot really be enrolled in both, <laughs> <laughs> not in both together. Right. And uh, similarly for the vaccine trial, we are really looking for women to enroll mm -hmm. because again, we have data that women respond to vaccine in a different way than, than right. men. So we, we encourage women in particular to reach out. It is a safe vaccine. Um, it has been tested in people who are much sicker than people living with HIV without any major adverse event. Um, we are following people for uh, uh, up to 96 weeks after vaccine to be 100% sure that there are no side effects. Mm -hmm. And um, so similarly to, to the Letermovir trial, um, it's coming out soon, it's not ready to enroll yet, but I, 
we hope that the CMV vaccine will be ready earlier mm -hmm. in the summer because we are a little bit at, more advanced uh, and we don't have all this soup study. <laughs> we make it a little bit harder to develop. Uh, so you won't have the same sub studies in that one? No, then? we don't have sub study in that one. Now, are you also looking for the immunologic non-responders for the uh, uh, CMV no. vaccine? No, for the CMV no. vaccine, no, because of course, to mount, also to respond to the vaccine, right. we, we need people who have a uh, decent Im Im immune system. So if I'm not wrong, I think we, as of the lowest we can go is 250 uh, CD4 T cell and 100 Nadir CD4 T cells. Oh really? So the Nadir, because many people, long-term survivors had much lower... Uh, I know. That, that's, uh, that's our way to maximize the response to mm -hmm. the vaccine, especially because this is a very early trial and we will expand, so if this works, we mm -hmm. will for sure expand it. Um, but right now, because it's a vaccine and it requires an intact right. immune uh, immune system to respond, sure. uh, we wanted to kind of maximize uh, <laughs> our chance to see something. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, this is very exciting. Thank you so much for stopping by and sharing this with us. Thank sure. you, you thank you. Best of luck in the study. And if you, okay. people want more information, just uh, go to the ACDG website. You can yeah. learn more. Sure. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thanks.